The Middle East is on the brink of a regional war with the conflict between Israel and Hamas marking one year on October the 7th. The longer the war lasts, especially in long-standing geopolitical flashpoints, the more likely it is to spill over not only into military conflicts, but also into hybrid wars where political, strategic and economic interests intersect. Russia's war against Ukraine is an example of what the Middle East may be facing, writes Foreign Policy. While Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 captured global attention, the conflict began earlier with the 2014 euro maidan revolution, the annexation of Crimea, and Russia's support for separatists in eastern Ukraine. International efforts to resolve the conflict have failed, leading to tensions escalating into a full-scale war. The hybrid dimension of this conflict has become a key aspect, covering everything from sanctions and cyber attacks to a proxy war between Moscow and Kiev that extends far beyond Europe. The sanctions imposed by the US and EU against Russia have become an important means of pressuring Moscow without direct military intervention. The West has imposed thousands of sanctions on individuals, companies and sectors, particularly in the banking and energy sectors. Secondary sanctions against countries and companies cooperating with Russia are used to limit circumvention schemes. For example, banks in Kyrgyzstan cooperate with Russian institutions in violation of sanctions, which threatens the country with isolation. Cyber attacks have become a tool for both Ukraine and Russia, targeting critical infrastructure and government institutions. Proxy conflicts have also spread to the Middle East and Africa, where Russia and Ukraine support different forces, such as in Sudan and Mali. All this highlights the potential for conflicts in regions such as the Middle East, to become hybrid, involving multiple players and interests. A prolonged conflict risks attracting in new players and further economic and strategic consequences. Recall Hezbollah's acting leader declared that the Lebanese militant group is focused on hurting the enemy by targeting Haifa and other parts of Israel, including Tel Aviv. Sheikh Naim Qasem, Hezbollah's deputy chief, vowed in a televised speech to defeat our enemies and drive them out of our lands. It was his third appearance since Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah was killed in an Israeli airstrike in a southern suburb of Beirut. Columns of smoke were seen rising in the Gaza Strip on Wednesday, as Israeli military tanks patrolled the border area in southern Israel. Israel is still at war in Gaza more than a year after Hamas attack, in which some 1,200 people were killed, mostly civilians, and another 250 were abducted. Around 100 captives are still being held in Gaza, about a third of whom are believed to be dead. Israel has been carrying out a major operation for more than a week in Jabalia, an urban refugee camp in northern Gaza dating back to the 1948 war surrounding Israel's creation. Israeli forces have repeatedly returned to Jabalia and other areas after saying that Hamas militants had regrouped. Hospitals have received around 350 bodies since the offensive there began on OC6, according to Dr. Monir al bursh the Director General of Gaza's Health Ministry. He told the Associated Press that more than half the dead were women and children, and that many bodies remain in the streets and under the rubble, with rescue teams unable to reach them because of Israeli strikes. Entire families have disappeared, he said. Israel's offensive in Gaza has killed over 42,000 people, according to the health ministry, which does not say how many were fighters but says more than half were women and children. The offensive has left large areas in ruins and displaced around 90% of Gaza's population of 2.3 million people, forcing hundreds of thousands into crowded tent camps or schools turned shelters.